And I believe that hard work could resolve everything, every problem. I had a lot of stress in my life. Uh, I was hired by a major litigation firm and uh, which had many different cities that practiced in and my responsibility was New York City, which was a lesson coming from a kid, uh, for a kid from Newfane, New York. And uh, no matter how hard I worked, no matter how hard I worked, I was stressed all the time, constantly. And by same things that stress all of you today, and me today. Deadlines, um, back then we didn't have cell phones, you know. But I think, uh, when I think of cell phones, I think of the evolution of it, you know. Um, we had cell phones and now we actually have these earpieces. Are any, is anybody wearing any of those? Uh, you know, they're, they're unbelievable. I think the next step in the evolution is to have an implant in our brains. <laughs> Wouldn't clients love that? I mean, they, they would love that. But <clears throat> maybe for my grandmother, hard work, perseverance, and resilience were more about survival. Survival. And I think that is something, a theme that we as lawyers struggle with all the time. We're in survival mode. Sometimes when we're in survival mode, we go on autopilot. We don't listen to people, we're short with them, we don't listen to clients, we're doing multiple things at one time. And sometimes uh, the autopilot on that plane causes the plane to crash, as it did in my life. And it'd be interesting if you could unpack that black box in that plane that was running on autopilot, you'd find probably, or you may find, some of the things I'm talking about with you today. There's a wonderful, um, I don't know if you'd call it a poem, but it's a writing by a, a guy, he, I think he just died at the age of 93. So this philosophy, I guess, served him well. His name was Studs Terkel. And for those of you who remember him, he wonder, wrote a wonderful book, either in the late 60s or early 70s, about working. And there's a chapter in there about lawyers. And he said, and I quote, working is about a search for daily meaning as well as daily bread, for recognition as well as cash, for astonishment rather than torpor, in short, for sort of life rather than a Monday through Friday sort of thing. And I think he hits the nail on the head when talking about meaning and he's trying to get at the fact that it is critical, as critical as all those other stress remedies to combating stress. It goes to the very heart of our work and our calling in life. And I think we all know that, uh, but we don't talk about it much as lawyers. For me, the stress went from being just stressful to being, uh, oh, I guess, a state of anxiety. Anxiety isn't the same thing as stress. We might say we're anxious or words to that effect. But it's really um, with stress, as Dr. Schiffner said, there's stress, our reaction, and then adaptation, and then we go back to rest, homeostasis. With anxiety, the button never shuts off. You're constantly pressing the stress button. And that has disastrous effects for our health, our body, and our brains. In your handout materials, I gave you uh, two articles by this wonderful author. I highly, highly suggest you read them. He's a funny guy, uh, funny in the sense of he's a wonderful writer, and he, he makes a, a very difficult topic interesting. And it's called Why Zebras? Don't get ulcers. An updated guide to stress, stress-related diseases, and coping. And I think why, what he's talking about, in summary, is that animals are stressed in the wild. Uh, they go through the same stress response that we do. We've had the same stress response for tens of thousands of years, just like our ancestors did. 
But what happened is that part of our brain, the cerebral cortex, the thinking part of our brain, has evolved and gotten much more complicated. And that's the part of our brain, I think, that gets us into trouble. We not only experience stress, but we think about it all the time. We belabor it. We ruminate about it. And I think that's what happened to me. So much so that I wasn't living or working 40 or 50 hours a week, or 60 sometimes if I were on trial, but 24-7, 24-7, I could never put down the stress. And I think if I did, I would somehow fail. Sometimes I thought when I was younger, you know, the stress is what kept me sharp, you know. I was on my toes all the time. And I think stress can serve a very good function for all of us. It can pull out of us sometimes the best of us, our creative potential and our ability to rise and meet challenges. But what happens when stress goes on too long? What happens when we go from being stressful to being anxious all the time, a state of anxiety? And I think that um, at that point, <clears throat> we've lost control. At that point, our life is out of control because we're being run by our life uh, rather than our being in control and running our life. You know, um, at some point, I guess it's fair to say that I never overcame anxiety, at least not initially. Because for me, uh, and people don't think of it in, the, in these terms often, my anxiety grew into depression. Depression. And people, it'd be helpful if people thought of it like as a continuum of sorts. Stress, maybe anxiety, maybe burnout, and then depression. They're all interrelated. They're all interrelated. And people, I think, don't appreciate the risk they're putting themselves in as lawyers by chewing and eating and consuming stress on a daily basis. They don't appreciate the risk they're putting themselves in for an anxiety disorder or clinical depression. And the statistics about this are just eye-popping. Um, you know, I, I gotta tell you, preparing for this talk today, I was driving up um, Delaware Avenue and I saw a billboard and on the billboard were two well-known attorneys, one of them bald. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, you know, if the truth be told, if the truth be told, their faces shouldn't be confident, superheroes, smiling, in charge of everything. Their faces should display panic and fear. <laughs> If the truth were told, you know, if the truth were told. And for me, oh, I'm 48 now, uh, when I turned 40, as I mentioned to you, um, the feelings went from being anxiety, it's almost as if a pendulum swung, to being depression. And at the time, I didn't realize what that was. Um, I think it was a red flag, some of the physical symptoms I had, and I think a lot of people don't appreciate that depression is a physical illness, just like stress. Stress Im impacts on us physically, so does anxiety and so does depression, but I think that um, there's a lot of misunderstanding about what depression is. 350 million people on our planet suffer from depression about 40 million in this country. And uh, by the year 2020, it'll be the leading cause of disability worldwide, according to the World Health Organization. Now, those are eye-popping statistics. But if you think those are bad, you should hear the statistics regarding lawyers. They did a study at John Hopkins University in which they looked at 104 occupations to try to figure out 
which jobs and which people suffered from depression the most. And uh, I guess it wasn't very surprising to those of us who are lawyers, maybe it was surprising to non-lawyers, that out of 104 occupations, lawyers topped the list. And they were found to suffer from depression at a rate of 3.6 times that of the other people studied. 